While The Witcher's Netflix series is more of a direct adaptation of the original novel, it, along with the additional success of Castlevania, has given us a renewed hope for a wave of new adaptations of video game properties by, dare I say it, competent directors and producers. It wasn't so long ago, after all, that comic book properties had very little in the way of well-received movies. For every Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, there was Ben Affleck Daredevil. For every Michael Keaton Batman, there was George Clooney's Batman and Nipple. Oh god, take it away! So, could it be that video game movies and TV shows are destined for a similar, and I apologise in advance for this phrase, glow up? While in the past video games have been, all things considered, a bit iffy when imagined outside of the primarily interactive medium of consoles and computers as much as David Quaid and Hideo Kojima continue to try and blur that line with interesting results, seeing as Netflix has already experimented with more interactive concepts on its platform, it would allow for a smoother transition between a game and a viewing experience. So, with Netflix's proven track record and willingness to greenlight video game adaptations that most producers wouldn't touch with a barge pole, let's take a look at some of those most deserving. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video games that deserve their own Netflix show. Number 10. Portal Portal is, along with Half-Life, the messiah of games, with millions of devotees hoping and praying for a second coming. Well, actually, a third coming. While the news of Valve working on another game in the series remaining a mere wisp of a dream. A TV adaptation of Portal would give fans a much-needed look into the setting and the underlying story of the Aperture Science Laboratories, as well as the characters of GLaDOS, Shell, Wheatley, Cave Johnson, and the other personality cores and turrets. They are some of the main reasons for the series' success, after all, and any continued exploration of their lives would definitely make the show a hit, no matter its actual quality. Although, let's hope that's good too. With Ellen McLean still able to voice the giant homicidal computer GLaDOS and Stephen Merchant reprising his role of Wheatley, Shell herself could either be a non-speaking role or the whole thing could even be filmed from her point of view as it is in the games. We could even have the originally pitched voice of Wheatley, Richard Ayoade, coming back onto the project to voice another one of the personality cores. Two snarky British robots being overseen by a murderous AI and voice recordings from a long-dead megalomaniacal CEO may be the strangest sitcom pitch to ever be made, but it would definitely be one to watch. Number 9. Borderlands Taking cues from Mad Max, as well as having an already well-constructed lore pertaining to the planet of Pandora, Sirens, and The Vaults, the Borderlands series would translate very well into a narrative show. As with each game in the series, the TV show could follow a group of four vault hunters seeking their fortune in the wastes of Pandora. Whether it's an adaptation of one of the games or a brand new story would depend on whether they wanted to bring any fan-favourite characters back. The likes of Handsome Jack, Lilith and Angel could all elevate the production, although with the series' release order playing fast and loose with chronology, it could be very easy to have the series set at any point between the games. But what of the casting? Having been snubbed for the part of Nathan Drake in the upcoming Uncharted movie, should it ever, you know, actually come out, Nathan Fillion would make a great handsome Jack. How about Dave Bautista as Brick? As for Borderlands 3 characters, Zane Flint is obvious, after all. We know that our very own me looks like every blonde character or person to have ever walked the earth, digital or otherwise, and they look like me in kind. Number 8. Five Nights at Freddy's Starting out as an astronomically successful indie game, the FNAF franchise has graced everything from books to VR experiences, merchandise, knockoff fan games, and apparently, upcoming movie. However, for a game based around the basic idea of what if Chuck E. Cheese was haunted, the FNAF lore is immensely complicated, with theorists, channels, fans, and the creator himself tripping over loose threads left, right, and center. So, with a TV series, they may actually be able to wrap things up neatly or end up making things even more complicated. While a film only has two and a bit hours to tell a story, a TV series would allow for all of the plot holes and contrivances to be properly addressed. A more narrative story could explore the crimes of William Afton and the Freddy Fazbear's pizza chain, as well as answer a lot of questions still asked by the fans. Who are the night guards? What's in the locked box? Who is the purple guy? Why does the night guard keep coming back for five nights? Did the job centre just not have any other options? Put your answers in the comments below. No, please don't do that, actually. Number 7. Dragon Age 
Now that Game of Thrones has fizzled out with an undeniable wet fart of an ending, there are millions of high fantasy fans looking for a show to replace it that has the same themes, scale, and scales to scratch that itch. If you'd want to pretend that The Witcher doesn't exist, that is. The Dragon Age series spans several main and spin-off games, novels, and comics, so the amount of lore that could be covered is enormous. Characters such as Loghain Mactir, who were, to quote one of our editors, Kieran, just kind of a bastard, become more sympathetic in the extended lore of the books, which would be great fodder for character arcs across the series. Even the less popular Dragon Age 2 could be easily adapted, being a more focused individual narrative on the player character Hawk. The main conflict of the series is the same as the games, aiming to save the continent of Thedas from suffering from the periodic blight, where darkspawn rise from the depths of the earth and destroy all civilization they find. As there have been five blights over the course of history at the beginning of the game, there's a lot of background to cover that could easily make a prequel series. Dragon Age The First Blight. Sounds quite good. Trademark Triple Jump 2020. We'll take cash or check, thanks. Number 6. Skyrim. Picture this. You return from your long day at the office and flop down onto your sofa, remote in hand. You boot up Netflix on your TV, console, or whatever else you can access it on these days, and brace for the all-too-familiar and painfully loud <laughs> indicating that your hazy stabbing at the key buttons has approximated your correct password. Ah, there. You spy an interesting-looking program on the Netflix home screen, perhaps labelled with one of those strange, twisted letters that a lot of their original shows seem to love. It's labelled as fantasy, with promises of dragons and broad expanses of scenery. Sounds fun! You click it. The screen fades in from black. Hey, you. You're finally awake. Todd's done it again. The absolute mad lad. Skyrim was on your computer, then it was on your console, then on your Alexa, and now it is on your TV streaming platform. There is no escape. There is only Skyrim. Choosing from on-screen options as to which person you'll follow, what location you'd like to travel to, and what items you want to pick up, it'll be just like Bandersnatch, except, you know, you'll still get stuck on bits of scenery or get hit by an enemy and be launched into orbit while spaghettifying wildly. Truly the fantasy experience Todd intended for us. Stealing, I mean taking inspiration from the Alexa version of Skyrim, Netflix will implement a brand new voice system that allows you to play out the game by shouting instructions at the television. You may want to soundproof your house when you start up the game, as the resulting cries of anguish at actual Shea Gorath Todd's deception, as well as the ensuing combat shouts of NO! OVER THERE! HIT HIM! SWORD! HIT! We'll probably get the police called on you. Better safe than sorry, hmm? Number 5. Fallout. All of our previous entries would be comprised of a single narrative story, but with Fallout's sprawling universe, a different approach could be taken. While each Fallout game contains hundreds of hours of gameplay, only a fraction of that is taken up by actual story. Speedrunners can attest to the fact that the main quest of Fallout 4 can be completed in as little as 40 minutes, which, say, is the perfect length for a television episode. Anthology shows are becoming more and more popular, with Black Mirror introducing what the Twilight Zone started back in the 1950s. Because of these relatively short stories, such as finding the water chip for a water recycling machine, finding your missing father, finding your missing son, finding a terraforming kit, and finding a reason to keep playing. There's a surprising amount of finding to be done in these games. These narratives could easily fit neatly into one or two episodes, making it a perfect anthology show. Additionally, there are hundreds of NPCs and side quests that could have episodes of their own, overarching appearances across several episodes, or even their own spin-offs. How about a noir-style series following synth cop Nick Valentine and his plucky vault-dwelling assistant slash best friend forever. This entire premise is the reason the Far Harbor DLC was released, so it's already proven to be a bankable idea. Humphrey Bogart would make a great Nick Valentine, but unfortunately, he died in 1957, as did Rod Sterling in 1975, so we'll have to settle for Harrison Ford instead. Number 4. Dark Souls Every decision in Dark Souls is important, from who you let out of jail cells to which direction you choose to set off in, and even what time you should attack, block, or use Estus. And because of this, passively watching a Dark Souls TV show wouldn't really be in the spirit or phantom <laughs> of things. However, with the success of the experimental Black Mirror interactive movie Bandersnatch, a new option has opened to us. 
With storytelling not really being at the top of the series' to-do list, the piecing together of the lore would be just as, if not, even more confusing than before. Dropped into the world of Lordran, you are told to fulfil the prophecy and succeed Lord Gwyn as the Lord of Cinder to keep the first flame burning. Why? You may ask. You work it out. Maybe they should contract Varty to provide a commentary track. Of course, like in the games, there would be only two actual official endings aside from death, link the first flame, or let it die out. But the number of possible routes may provide almost unlimited replayability. Only downside is that with so many options and such a long runtime, I would probably never be seen or heard from ever again. Number three, Overcooked. Narrative shows aren't the only programs on Netflix, though. With the success of The Great British Bake Off, there's been a succession of quirky, competitive cookery shows for both UK and US audiences. While other shows such as Nailed It and Sugar Rush, other competitive reality baking shows are available, focus more on the cookery aspect, an overcooked adaptation could mix in obstacle courses that would make Takeshi's Castle feel envious. Cooking fish and chips while barreling down river rapids, serving patrons from a hot air balloon in the middle of a hurricane and running across busy roads to deliver dishes. This is cooking meets Top Gear levels of risk. You could even dedicate an entire show to the interior designers making the most difficult kitchens imaginable just to spite the contestants. The recipes may be relatively simple, but try delivering them while bread zombies are trying to grab your ankles as you race over a rope bridge between where the cooking station is and where the plates are being stored. And the clincher? It isn't a competition. You have to work together in order to win. And isn't that just the hardest challenge of them all? Number 2. Hatoful Boyfriend A dating game that Nikola Tesla pictured here with a pigeon would be proud of becomes a top-rated dating show. Can't find a partner in your local area and too busy to maintain a long-distance relationship? Why not have a partner who can fly home to roost whenever you need them? In the post-apocalyptic future where bird flu has wiped out the majority of the human population, romance is hard to come by for the remaining feral hunter-gatherers in the wilderness. But good news! There are literally thousands of intelligent anthropomorphic birds also looking for love, and apparently bestiality is no longer frowned upon. Hooray! Although please nobody try to explain to us how that would work. Like a combination of first dates and country file, that's country file spelled with a ph, will these young romantics find love? Will the cure for the mutated bird flu ever be found? Will the human and bird populations cease their segregated civilizations and come together once more? And who are you going to choose to fly off into the sunset with? Who's a pretty girl then? Number one. Overwatch. If any video game ever needed more exploration of its lore, it's Overwatch. For a hero shooter that prioritises gameplay over story, there's a lot that's mainly been left up to fan interpretation. What is Overwatch about is a question usually answered with an unsure uh, by players, because apart from the collection of short videos introducing each character, there isn't an awful lot to go on. There's a feud between two dragon brothers, a guerrilla laboratory on the moon, a civil rights battle between humans and robots, and a shady organisation, Talon, who are attempting to… well, we don't know yet, but they're definitely evil, we think. We see this playing out in a similar fashion to Netflix's Defenders series, with each main player getting their own show before coming together for a big scrap, Marvel style. With a collection of characters spanning different genders, nationalities and species, casting could be very interesting. A lot of the voice actors are also decent screen actors and already look like their characters, such as Carolina Ravasa, Sombra, and Jali Bimani, Symmetra, and Gaku Space, Genji. So apart from a few roles, there wouldn't be much recasting required. And as for Winston? Well, the guy inside the Coco the Gorilla suit is out of a job now, so I bet he'd be glad for the work. No, it is a man in a suit. You all know it. Wake up, sheep. And that's our list. What other video games would you like to see adapted and added to Netflix so you can endlessly scroll past them while your food gets increasingly colder? Because you really should have decided what you were going to watch before you sat down and, um, you know, stick them in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.